Uh, okay, good morning. So the lesson actually I told you is finished, but I think it is good if I try to solve some of the problems on mathematical induction, either from the PDF file that we are following, or from I choose some of them for you, we can solve them together. Okay, so let us try to refresh your memory by uh, giving a simple one. Uh, okay, so let us see how it goes. Uh, if you don't mind, let us for warm up start with some simple question if there is something here. Yes. Okay, so let us for example solve this problem from that file that we're using. Okay. Are you, have you completely forgotten? If you have completely forgotten, I should, can do one myself and then give you this second. Okay, so let me do one myself. So, uh, according to this problem, we are supposed to use mathematical induction to prove that this equality holds for uh, natural numbers, every natural number n. Okay, so let me write it here on the board. So the problem is uh, we want to show that 3 plus 9 uh, plus uh, 15 up to plus 6n minus 3 is equal to 3n squared. Okay, this is what we want to show and they have emphasized that you have to use mathematical induction. Because if they haven't emphasized, there is a simpler way to do it. And as I told you that, you don't even need to know what the answer is. You should be able to find this yourself. How? This sum. In principle, Math 1C students should be able to find that. Yes. Do you remember what is this sum? We studied this before, this topic. That was an arithmetic progression. So you see, this is 3. The second one is 9, the next one is 60, 50. So every time I am adding 6 units to it. And of course, you, I don't expect you to remember the formula, but uh, the formula for the arithmetic sum Sn is n times a1 plus a n over 2. And then n, a1 is 3, a n is the last one here, 6 n minus 3 divided by 2. And then you simply that this and that are gone. This becomes 6 n squared divided by 2, which is 3n squared. So as simple as that, and that is a complete proof, okay? Even though they, have, they, they don't want you to do it in that way. So even if you write this in the exam, it is completely correct proof, but it is not acceptable here because they have emphasized to use mathematical induction, okay? So uh, let us just, and by the way, this method is more powerful because I didn't know, I don't even need to know what is the answer. But in mathematical induction, someone has to provide you the final answer. What you can do is just to confirm that. Okay? So, let us go and review things. The first thing that you have to do, so you call this Pn. And then, do you remember? The base of mathematical induction is to check uh, what you have for n equals to 1. So, in other words, I need to rewrite p, I need to write p of 1 and to check it if it is true or false. So, p of 1 means rewrite your statement as if n is given to be 1 from the beginning. Okay, in other words, you need to replace n with 1. So, if I replace n with 1 on the right hand side, that is just simple as that. But if I replace n with 1 here, what does it mean? How many terms I have to take? One, one term. Okay, so the left-hand side becomes 3. To be honest, you need to think it this way. When I put 1 here, it becomes 3. So in principle, if I give you an n, you have to start from 3, add 6 units at a time until you reach to 6 times n minus 3. But when n is 1, so 6n minus 1 is already 3, and when I start with 3, I have to stop there because I consider the everything. So this is what I have to ask myself. Is it true or false? True. It's true, because 1 to power 2 is 1 times 3 is 3. The left-hand side is also 3, so that is true. 
So this is the way that you have to write. So you just write P of n, and then P of 1, and then you write P of k. P of k is the simplest possible one. You just uh, rewrite everything, just replace n with k. Yes? So 3 plus 9 plus 15. So in the book, they have used letter P, okay? But I don't want to make this, I want to make a quite good distinction between this P and that P, so I am using letter K. And then it becomes 6K minus 3 is equal to 3K squared. What I expect you to write in the exam, this phrase is important, this is assumed to be true. Yes? The next one uh, is writing the same statement, but I write it for k plus 1. So this means that 6 plus 9 plus 15, I continue, I have to replace every n with k plus 1, or doesn't matter, every k with k plus 1. So, but let us just do it, for example, if I replace k with k plus 1 here, I don't mean this. This is the wrong way of writing. This doesn't mean I have replaced k with k plus 1. Replacing k with k plus 1 means this. Yes, I am taking k out and replace it by k plus 1. So this means that when I simplify it, it becomes 6k plus 6 minus 3, which becomes plus 3. So it means that if I write this one for k plus 1, the last term becomes 6k plus 3 rather than 6k minus 3, yes? And the right-hand side is also simple. I take k off and replace it with k plus 1. As I told you before, it means replace it by a pair of brackets around it. But then I expect you to write to be proven. So this is the same structure every time. So if you have a mathematical induction, you call it p of f, you test it for what? You write it for k, write this phrase in front of it, and then write it for k plus 1, write this phrase in front of it. Okay? And then usually for these, so you have to also, you should also have some kind of experience. We have solved these kinds of problems with these dots in front. So usually it is better to start from the left hand side and then try to do some valid take some valid steps and reach to the right hand side. But this is extremely important to know that we are not empty handed. In proving this, if necessary, I can use this assumption as well. That is the main power of mathematical induction. Okay, so if you don't mind, I start from this left hand side of this expression, left hand side of the last expression. This is equal to 3 plus 9 plus 15 plus up to this one, 6k plus 3. And then hopefully by experience from the previous lesson, you have you know that what you need to do is better, yes? Because you see that every time I am going 6 units up. When I reach to this one, even though I didn't write the previous one here, but it is good to write it in front of our eyes. What is the previous one? Because every time I am going six units up, if I ask you what is the previous one to this, you subtract six from it, you get this. If I ask you what is the previous one to this, you subtract six units and you get this. So when I ask you what is the previous one to this, you subtract six units. 6k plus 3, you subtract six units, becomes what? So it means that the previous one is 6k minus 3. Is that understandable? It is good to see it in front of your eyes because you can see that exactly this is this expression that you have. Any questions so far? Okay, and then what I do, I would say because this expression is assumed to be equal to this expression, so instead of the whole expression here, I can replace simply 3k squared. So this becomes 3k squared for this part, and then plus copy and pasting this part. But I don't need any pair of brackets anymore, so it just becomes this. Okay, so that is my left-hand side up to here. But let us check what I need. I don't need this. I, know I need to reach to this, but then it becomes very trivial what to do. So what do you think I will do? 
my goal is to algebraically simplify this little by little so that I reach to here. So what's the first step? What is the first step do you think I will do? Yes? Place the uh, first um, k terms with, uh, with the sum for all those which we have from the... No, I did that. Yes, but then, but, but this I have not done because my, this left hand side is this one. I did some valid, I took some valid steps and I reached here. But I want to reach here. I'm not done yet. So it means that I have to continue so that it becomes this one. Because so far, I have done a good job. I have reduced all things. To very simple expression, but this is not still what I want, so I have to continue. Yes. Factor of three out. Yes, it, it it is not that hard to see because you see a factor of three out, so it motivates you to factor three out. Yes. So if you factor a three out, this becomes k squared, this becomes two k, and the next one becomes one. But still, it is not finished. But do you see it is finished? Yes. Because k squared plus 2k plus 1 is the expanded version of what expression? K plus, k plus 1. And is this this one? Yes. So you see, I started from the left-hand side, but in order to be able to reach to the right-hand side, I also used my assumption. But that is the structure of mathematical induction. Is that clear? And the structure is always the same. I'm not saying that's always as easy as this one. Okay? If, you are, if your algebra is good, I mean, these dots, these problems with these three dots are not that hard. It depends a little bit on your algebraic skills. Okay? Any questions here? Okay. But this, this is important to write in the exam. This is important to write. This is also important to write. Okay? Okay, so now I want to wait for you. Uh, we go to level uh, two problems. Let us see. For example, let us go and ask you to solve this one. I will wait for you. Okay, so how is it going? Again, the same story. You, you, if I didn't give you the right-hand side, I, it is possible. This is an E-level question when you are studying geometric progression. It's a geometric progression, yes? Why? Because every time I'm multiplying by 3. So, might be, if this appears in the exam in that part, you should be able to answer it easily. But here, you have to use mathematical induction. Otherwise, there is another formula for SN, for arithmetic progression. If you look it up, this is this formula. Okay, so here T1 is the first term, which in this case is 3. What is R? R is the number that I am multiplying every time, which is also 3. And then 3 minus 1. It's finished, you see. This becomes 2, and when I multiply 3 in, it becomes 3 to power n plus 1 minus 3, which is the right. So the solution is much faster, actually, if I don't want to use mathematical induction. Okay? But anyway, we have to use mathematical induction for this problem. So I told you, what is the first step? It's the, fir the first step is to call it Pn. The second step is to replace, to rewrite the expression if n is 1. So I replace n with 1. So what happens? If I replace n with 1 on the right hand side, it becomes 3 to the power of 1 plus 1 minus 3 divided by 2. But what happens on the left side? You see, when I give you n, you have to start writing consecutive powers of 3 until this exponent reaches to the given n. But when n is 1, I start writing 3, it is finished. Yes. So the left hand side is also 3. Then you have to ask yourself, is this a true statement or a false statement? So <clears throat> let us check. So this is equivalent. 
three, I cannot do anything with that, but this one I can calculate. This is two, three power two is nine minus three divided by two. Is this true? Yes, because nine minus three is six divided by two is three, and this is, so that is true. Yes, any questions here? And then you write the simplest part. The simplest part is just copy and pasting. Instead of having letter N, you have letter K. So what happens? It becomes 3 plus 3 to the power of 2, 3 to the third, and then 3 to the end. Sorry, K. And then on the right hand side, 3 to the K plus 1 minus 3. But what I expect you to write in front is that you write, you, this is necessary, assumed to be true. Okay, and then you rewrite this for k plus 1. What does it mean? It means you replace k with k plus 1. And you might need some scratch work. I recommend you to do those things because if you want to write everything down, that would be boring. So I replace k with k plus 1. I don't have any problems here. On the right hand side, I replace k with k plus 1. So there is no k here. But what happens here if I replace k with k plus 1? It becomes k plus 2, because I replace k with k plus 1, there is another 1 there. Yes? And then I expect you also to write this, to be proven. And now you have enough experience for these uh, 3 dots and 4 dots, whatever it is. So you start from the left hand side. So in the left hand side you write 3 plus 3 to the power of 2 plus 3 to the power of 3 and then you continue. You have enough experience. Of course the last one is 3 to the power of k plus 1 but it is always helpful in these problems also rewrite the previous term. So what is the previous one? 3 to the power k. Yes, Because I am increasing the powers one step at a time. When I have reached the k plus 1 it means that I have passed the previous level, which is 3 to the power of k. Is that understandable? Okay, and then I continue. Why this is good to write the previous one? Because if you write the previous one, then you can see immediately this part is what you have. So instead of this expression, a long expression, I take it off and put this one instead. So it becomes 3 to the power of k plus 1 minus 3 divided by 2. This is what I replaced for this, but plus this one is left, so I have to copy and paste. Okay, but what is my goal? My goal is to start from the left hand side, which I did, and continue until I reach to the right hand side. But what I have gotten so far is this, which is not exactly this one, here, this is the first time that you need to think what to do, okay? Because these are more or less algorithmic. You just do the same thing over and over again. So only the thinking comes in. This is the part that differs from problem to problem. So how can I continue this? Because my goal is to show this expression is equal to that expression. What is one way to see this is that what I want is one fraction only. But here I have not only one fraction but something extra added to it. So it motivates me to combine them into one fraction. Yes? And if I want to combine them into one fraction, so the denominator is 2 because the denominator here is not written as 1. So I am not rescaling this so I have to copy and paste its numerator. But because the denominator was 1, I have written 2, I have rescaled it by 2, so I have to do the same thing to the numerator as well. So whatever this is, I have to multiply it by 2. The reason I put plus here, because that's plus. Yes? Is that right? So far, so good. But still, that is not exactly what I want. Okay? But the good news is that 2 is 2, good. Minus 3 is minus 3. So it means that I have problems with these two terms. 
Because instead of these two terms, I need to have this. So I have to justify this step. But that is also easy, isn't it? So this, let us call this, I don't know. Yeah, this is not a good way of drawing. So let us call something. Yes. Whatever this is, sorry. Uh, whatever this is, how many of these things you have? You have one of them. You have one of these packages. But again, from the same thing, you have this at the very end. But how many of them you have there? Two. two. You have one of these packages here. You have the same package, but two more. So in total, how many of those packages you have? You have three, yes? So this becomes three of those packages. Three of those packages means three times that package. And then minus 3 is alone, so I put minus 3 here, and then I divide. And I hope that you agree with me the problem is solved, yes? Because 3 times 3 to the power k plus 1, what's the answer? 3 to the power k plus 2. Plus 2, because this power is 1. When you multiply them, you put the base, and you add the exponents. When you add the exponents, it becomes k plus 2. And then you have minus 3 there, and then divided by 2. Now, that is exactly what you want. That's the right answer. So I don't know why this is called a level two problem. The previous one was level one. I would say that they are more or less the might be might be this because of this understanding. So it was not that a hard problem. Is that understandable? Yes. Uh, okay. So let us see what we have now. If I understand the Swedish correctly, you are supposed to guess a formula for whatever it's given here and then try to prove your formula, yes? Okay, so using mathematical induction to see that this is really correct. And <laughs> to be honest, they have given you series which is not easy to guess, yes? So I don't know why they have done this. So that is the only weakness I want to emphasize again. This is the weakness of mathematical induction. You cannot even start it if you don't have the right insight. So it might be, this is the problem. They want to show you that, of course, mathematical induction might be useful. Let us take one of them together. I want to wait for you. This is a level 3 problem. Uh, I think the only reason that it's called level 3 problem is because you don't have the formula. You have to guess and then prove. And uh, they have given you something that might be not easy to guess. Okay. So my, I want to wait for you. First of all, by checking some special cases, try to find a formula that will actually give you this sum. But that is just a guess. And then we have to prove your guess using mathematical induction. But please don't proceed to your mathematical induction. If you finalize the formula, just let, it, let me know about it. And if it is correct, we do it together. I also need to guess myself, okay? Uh, whenever, uh, whenever you have your guess, you can tell me so that uh, I also need to do some inspections to find the formula, if I can guess. Uh, do you have any rules? No? So let us write. Okay, uh, don't worry about the exam, okay, but I will not give these kind of questions there. There is no point for it, because this is the weakness of mathematical induction, but they are trying to circumvent somehow the problem. Okay, so let us, we want to guess a formula for this sum. The only difference this, of this problem with the other problem is that the right-hand side is not given to you yet. So if n is 1, it means how many terms I have to take care of? One, the first term. So if n is 1, the answer becomes 1 times 6, which is 6. Now, if n is 2, what are you doing? What should I write for 2? If n is 2, this becomes 2 times 9. It doesn't mean take the second one. Be careful. It means the first one and the second one. If that is you are doing, if you are taking just the second one and try to guess this doesn't work, we want to find the formula for the sum. This tells you the interpretation of these dots are important. It means that when I give you n, you follow this pattern 
until the first number reaches to n. Okay, it doesn't mean the only take the nth one. Yes? So for example, if n is 1, this becomes 1 times 6. I have to start from here, continue this pattern until I reach to 1 times 6. But when I start from here, I have already there, so it is finished. But when n is 2, what is this number? It is 2 times 9. So it means that I start from here, I continue this pattern so that I reach to 2 times 9. So I start always from here, and then I continue this pattern until I reach to the point, to the point where n is 2. But this is the, what, what I want to get. So this is 6 plus 18 is 24. So I need to write a formula that gives me 6 when n is 1, gives me 24 when n is 2. For example, if I, let me repeat again. When n is 3, you put 3 here, it becomes 3 times, uh, what is that? 12. Okay? It doesn't mean write only the third one. You always start from here, and then you continue your pattern to reach to the step that you want. So this means that, again, when I write it for 3, I have to calculate this one. Yes? Okay, so what that is? Up to here is 24, this is 36, so it, is become, it becomes 60. Okay? I'm lazy to continue, okay, but let us do one more. So N4... So what is that? 1 times 6. I, I hope that you know what to do now, yes? What is the next one? You see, this first number is increasing 1 at a time. But the second number is increasing 3 units at a time. So the next number will be 4 times what? 50. But up to here is 60. This is also another 60. So it becomes 120. Uh, I don't know, can you guess? Okay. Yes? Okay, no, can you find the pattern? Can you write a formula which generates 6 when n is 1, generates 24 when n is 2, generates 60 when n is 3, generates 120 when n is 4? So if you cannot guess, that is the debt. So that is the weakness of mathematical induction. I, this is good, actually, from this perspective. You can feel it. That, okay, if I cannot guess, mathematical induction is useless. Okay? Okay, but do you have any idea how to do So this is the formula, I guess, hopefully is correct. Of course, uh, n times n plus 1 times n plus 2. Yes, let us check. If n is 1, 1 times 2 times 3 is 6. Yes? When n is 2, 2 times 3 times 4. What is that? 2 times 3 is 6 times 4, 24. If n is 3, 3 times 4 times 5 is 60. Yes? And the next one hopefully will work. But still, we are not 100% sure that the formula works. So then we have to use mathematical induction to prove this. Okay, so at least you felt that this is the real weakness of mathematical induction. You cannot even, you cannot even start mathematical induction if you don't know what is the right hand side or you don't have a guess for it. Yes, please. How do we find the formula without guessing? No, the formula without guessing, uh, I need to use the properties of the sigma notation. Okay, so I will write this like this, sigma. Okay, that is k times 3k plus 3, yes? And then k goes from 1 to n. So first of all, I write this sum in that form. Okay, and then what happens, I can factor a 3 out. k goes from 1 to n. But then this becomes sigma, if I multiply k in, it becomes k squared plus k. And then I can break my sigma into two sigmas, so it becomes 3 sigma k squared, k goes from 1 to n, and then sigma k, k goes from 1 to n. In, in high school, you know about this sum. Sigma k goes from 1 to n is 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus up to n. 
which is a famous formula, you know it. But you don't know about this, but I knew about that, and I know how to derive it. So that the formula for this is one, this one. Of course, now you can prove it using mathematical induction. Okay, but how to derive the formula? Either you just guess, but this formula is more complicated to guess. Okay, so this is the 1 to power 2 plus 2 to power 2 plus 3 to power 2 up till n to power 2. So we have the sum of the natural numbers. We have the sum of the square of natural numbers. So if you add them and then multiply by 3, hopefully you will get this. Okay. Uh, so it is more fun, of course. You have to be more creative. Because, yeah. But at least it is not that hopeless. You see, it was not that easy. If you don't want to use mathematical induction, then you have to be creative enough to solve the problem in that way. The reason I am not creative enough because I knew it from my previous knowledge, so I'm following what I'm... But if I want to invent it myself, then I have to be very smart, okay? So now here, at least, you have to be a little bit smart to guess, but then the next of it is just mathematical induction and you do that. Okay, so this is our conjecture. By the way, this is called conjecture in mathematics. The result that you believe is, to, is, to, is true, but it is not proven yet. It's called conjecture. So this is our guess, educated guess or conjecture, and then we want to prove it. Okay, but the rest of it should be easy. Of course, you face some problems, factorization and algebra might be, because this is a level 3 problem, but let us see what we can do. So this is P of n. I want to see that what P of n is. So this is P of n. I can I check it for P of 1. Okay, what is P of 1? The left-hand side, hopefully now you know, it's just 1 times 6. The right-hand side is 1 times 1 plus 1, 1 plus 3. Is this a statement true or false? The left-hand side is 6. The right-hand side is 1 times 2 is 2 times... Oh, I made a mistake. Sorry. What did I do? Uh, that was plus 2, sorry. Okay, so 2, 3, 6. If I multiply them, 1, 6. So that is true. And then what I do, uh, I consider this to be true for k. I just copy and pasting and replacing n with k. This is the easiest part. Yes? And then this is k times k plus 1 times k plus 2. And then, of course, you write <coughs> assumed to be true. This is necessary in the exam. Okay, and then I want to prove it for k plus 1. So what should I do? I rewrite the expression for k plus 1. And I want you also to be good in writing this. Don't write too much because it's, it will tie your hand. Okay, so can you do it in your head? If I replace k with k plus 1, here I don't need even to think. That is k plus 1. But of course I have to put it in a pair of brackets. But can you do the next one in your head? You replace k with pair of brackets, k plus 1. Yes? 3k plus 6. Yes, is that right? So what I do, I replace k with k plus 1. Yes. And then I have a 3 at the end. So this becomes 3k, 3 plus 3. 3 plus 3 is 6. This is why I'm, I really want you to not uh, write so much. Yes? And on the right-hand side, I do the same, k to k plus 1, this becomes k plus 1, the next one becomes k plus 2, the next one becomes k plus 3, and I expect you to write to be proven. Yes? Okay, the same story, uh, the method is exactly the same. So I start from the left-hand side. And I told you some uh, I, a piece of advice. So what was that? In these problems, you have enough experience that when you write this, it is very uh, good to write the previous step as well. Okay, so let me just put some space here. Okay, can you tell me what is the previous one? You see the pattern. The left side number is being increased one unit at a time. The right-hand side number is being increased three units at a time. So if I want to go backwards, I subtract one unit from the left side, 
I subtract three units from the right. So yes. Can we just copy paste the PK? Yeah, that is it. But I want to confirm, I want you to understand that I am not cheating. It really becomes that. Yes? So because if I go, go to a previous step, you subtract one unit from this, you subtract three units from it. That's good. And the right hand side, we have to continue. So this is my left hand side. But now you know what to do. You are not empty handed now. You know, at least you have a guess for this part. What is that? This part is this expression. So what should I do? So it becomes equal. Instead of this, I put this expression, which I assume to be true. And then, after that, I copy and paste this part. So it becomes plus k plus 1 times 3k plus 6. Agreed? Okay. So far, so good. That's the only th part that you need to think. So you need to ask yourself, my goal is to reach to this expression. I haven't achieved that yet. I have reached up to this point. By looking here and there, this is what you have, this is what you want. So by comparing these two, might be you get some hints, hints how to do it, how to go forward. For example, when I look at here, I see that I have this factor k plus 1, and that is a good news because I have a k plus 1 here and a k plus 1 here. It might motivate me to factor it out. So I will do this and hope for the best, okay? Yes. So with what happens, this becomes k. So if I pull this out, these two are left. So it is k from here, k plus 2 from there. This is finished. I pull this out, plus this is left. So. And then another. Okay. Okay, so let us simplify. Of course, we... The next step is clear. I don't touch this because I need it. Okay, and then I start simplifying. So simplification means multiplication here. Or no, I mean, it is even easier. Can you see instead of multiplication what to do? Remember, I, I, I needed this. By factoring it out, I have it. I also need two more things here. But can you see now what is better to do instead of multiplying? Yes? Factor k plus 2. Uh, how? Before that, we need to do some step, yes? So here, between these two, you can factor a 3 out. Then it becomes k. Then it becomes 2. Now, k plus 2 appears here, and there, it is ready to be pulled out. Yes? So I pulled k plus 2 out. And then, when I pull k plus 2 out, k is left. When I pull k plus 2 out, plus 3 is left. And that is the end of the story, because that is exactly what I want. Yes? Is that clear? Okay. So, that is this type of problems that sometimes you might guess. So, let us go. There are two sections of the problems here. Okay, so let us go to the next step. And if you don't mind, let me stop for you. This is more or less the same thing, but with fractions. Okay, so I want to wait for you that you can do this one yourself. Uh, okay, could you solve it? At least might be some technicalities coming, but of course, whatever you write matters. If you write these things properly, you get points. So uh, let us do this one. So the first step is as usual to call this PN. And then check it for N equals to 1. So what is this for N equals to 1? You put N equals to 1 here. It becomes 1 times 3 which is the first one. So this means that you stop there. But if you put this, it becomes the second one. It doesn't mean just write the second one. It means write the first one and the second one. And if it comes the third one, it means the sum of the first three should be considered. Okay? So this is the first one. 
And then I replace n with 1 there. And then I ask myself, is it true or false? 1 times 3 is 3, so it is a third. 2 times 1 is 2, plus 1 is also a 3. And this is 1. So this is completely true. And then you rewrite the simplest part, which is replacing letter n with letter k. It's 1 over 1 times 3, 1 over 3 times 5, plus 1 over 5 times 7. Of course, I am telling you replacing letter n with letter k because I talked about the philosophy of why this method works a lot. So this is why after we learn that once, we just copy and paste what we learn most of the time. So this becomes k. 2k plus 1. And then this is important to write, assumed to be true. Yes? And then I write the next level, and replace every k with k plus 1 now. So it becomes 1 over 1 times 3 plus 1 over 3 times 5 plus 1 5 times 7. Yes? And then continue. So just do it in your head. Replace k in your head with k plus 1. So what happens here? What? So what did you write when you were doing? Because I gave you enough time to at least write this properly. Yes, I replaced k with k plus 1 everywhere. So 2k minus 1. I replace k with k plus 1. I told you put pair of brackets always. And then minus 1. So then I multiply. It becomes 2k plus 2 minus 1. So it becomes 2k plus 1. So the first one becomes 2k plus 1. But there is another one there. I do the same thing. So I have 2k plus 1. I take k off and put k plus 1 instead. There is another one up there. So this becomes 2k plus 2 plus 1, so which is 2k plus 3. Okay, if I replace k with k plus 1, I don't need to put pair of brackets here. But this 2k plus 1 became this, so of course this 2k plus 1 becomes the same thing. Yes, and this is to be true. Okay, how many of you have written everything so far correctly, yes? Okay, that's good. Oops, sorry, I have to put one here. And then hopefully you know what to do. So you start from the left-hand side. So you continue. But I told you that in these problems that you see these dots, it is always helpful to write the previous step. And of course, as you know what is going on. So this one, in principle, this is the only one matters. But for our own understanding, we write the previous term. So what the previous term is, so you see every time I go two steps up, both on the right and on the left. So the previous one, this one is two units less. And this one is also two units less. Oh, sorry. And of course, you can say that it's exactly this. Okay, so I write this so that I can see this transparently. This part, this, this long expression, by assumption to be true, is just simply k over 2k plus 1. So I take this off, and I put what I know about it, which is k divided by 2k plus 1. Okay, this one is for this. And then after that, this is convex. Yes? And now you know what to do. Always, when you reach this point, you have to think. And the best way to think how to proceed is to compare what you have and what you want. Yes? So what you have is this expression. What you want is this expression. At least, you see here, you have two fractions. What you want is just simply, uh, simply one fraction. So what you do, you take the common denominator. So I, I hope that you immediately realize between these two, the common denominator is this one. So LCD, the least common the divisor. Sorry, the least common uh, denominator. Okay. 
this one, if you compare it with this one, nothing has changed. So the numerator of this one will not change. And there is a plus here. But if you compare this one with that one, it is being rescaled by this factor. So I have to rescale its numerator by the same factor. Okay? This becomes k times 2k plus 3. Yes? Okay, so far so good. But it is not exactly what I want. So I have to continue. So don't, if something is already in factorized form, this is my advice. Don't tamper with it. Just keep it like that. So 2k plus 1 and then 2k plus 3. But the numerator, you have to uh, expand and finally uh, factorize. So if I multiply this in, so this becomes 2k squared plus 3k plus 1. Okay? And the only thing that we want to do is to factorize this because still it is not exactly what I want. Either you are good in factorization and you factorize it, as you know. If not, you can cheat a little bit here. If you have done everything right, then you say that, okay, if this is supposed to reach here, it means that I have to get rid of this factor, yes, because this factor is not there. So if I factorize this, there definitely should be that factor there, yes? And what is supposed to be left is k plus 1. Okay, so this k plus 1 should also be there. Of course, this works if you are confident about what you have done so far. Okay, but and I will not ask you why did you come up with this idea. Okay, that's not my business. Okay, but you can double check. Is this factorization a correct one? Let us check. 2k times k is 2k squared. 2k times 1 is 2k. 1 times k is another k, 2k plus k is really 3k, and 1 times 1 is 1. So my factorization is correct, even though I use cheating a little bit. And then what happens, this term and that term are cancelled, and what is left for me is exactly what I want, which is k plus 1 over 2k plus 3. And that becomes equal to the right-hand side. So you see that induction problems are really lengthy, so you have to uh, use to it. But it is not that hard. Okay, is that clear? So how much time we have? So I don't think I will be able, to, uh, I will spend one more session uh, solving problems for you. So there are some problems I want to talk about if you see sigma notation. It's, in principle, you shouldn't face any problems. My main concern is how to solve inequalities using mathematical induction. And of course, these examples are not enough. Might be I also give you some more examples. Okay, any questions so far? Okay, so I think it's a good point to stop here.